Right, welcome back. To recap, in my very first video, I wanted to give a brief overview of the absolute gauntlet of misery I had to run through for five years running a business because I didn't know my numbers. And hopefully, if I save just one person from going down the same path of just misery that I had to go through, then I will have accomplished my mission. The second video, I showed a brief overview of a cursory glance at how this, this works. I showed how I had different pages for each machine, repair logs, etc. But so far, you haven't really seen anything actually take action. Well, that's where we're going to get into today. We're actually going to change one thing. Just want to start. And I want to show you just how many things are affected from a simple change. And there is no way, I don't care if you're Einstein, there is no way you could do all this math in your head and know how many different things are affected unless you take the time to set something like this up for your business. And that way you don't have to think through under pressure and all this, well, how is this gonna affect me? You did the, the prep work, hopefully, and <laughs> built something like this, so you just quickly plug it in, boom. Okay, I know exactly how it's gonna affect me. Now I can make a strategy because that's what being a business owner is about. It's not fighting out, fighting fires in the trench one by one. It's, you gotta be a general. You gotta look over the whole business and say, all right, I've gotta figure out how to steer the ship, not scoop water out. So let's take a dive in. This is our dashboard, just to recap. This is the page where everything that's boiled down into the information I want to see as a business owner. And boy, well, I love this, this section up here, believe me. This one's cool too. You get to see, hey, percentage wise, how close am I to the goal that I set? How much fuel did I use? What are my profit margins per type of material I'm selling? Who, who am I buying my, my grindings from and what proportion of? How many hours am I running per type of equipment? What about what kind of trucks are bringing me stuff? Well, why would that be important? Maybe you fine tune your, your prices to make it more competitive for guys that you favor. Okay, and then we go down here, proportion of total revenue. You're definitely gonna wanna know that. You wanna know, hey, wh what is making me money as a company? What, what's bringing in the cash? And you can look at this and on the right, it's gonna tell you the percent. So that's that orange line. And then the, the bars itself is saying how much as a dollar amount that item, in this case, tipping fees, you look here and say, oh, okay. Tipping fees is making me almost 140 grand. That's pretty awesome. Tipping fee by revenue truck size, excuse me, tipping fee revenue by truck size. You wanna see, okay, uh, look, I'm making a lot of cash on these end dump semis. So maybe I make some certain decisions based on that information your load count by truck size, your bulk yards generated by truck size. Um, and, and again, what, what that's showing you is, okay, maybe you get a thousand pickups through the door, but they're not making a lot of your material. So if you really did, let's say you were in a crunch for material and not really focused on tipping fees, you, you know, selling season, you need a boatload of material coming through the door. Look here and you say, oh, my big dogs, that's the grapple trucks, the ends, dump semis, and the trash walking floors. Those guys generate a ton of actual material for me, regardless of how many trucks come in. Proportionally, they, they bring it. So let me call those guys instead of focusing on these little mom-pa operations. So that's what that's about. So then you got your product sales by the cubic yard and proportion of the sales. So the proportion of the sales, that orange line that's saying of everything I sell, you know, in this case, my double shred brown represents, let's call it 19% of what I'm selling. And then the, the purple is how many yards you sell. So without going too much in the weeds, here's the hypothetical, guys. In the original example and the way it's set up right now, we're going to go over our manufacturing flow chart. We're going to go over here and we're going to say, okay, we're going to change one thing. Right now, everything else being equal, we bring in 36,000 yards of brush and logs and stumps, raw material. Hasn't been grounds, not wood chips, just virgin material. 
based on the guys dropping stuff off. We're not going to mess with that. What we are going to mess with is simply how much of it we grind up. So this is saying, as of now, we have a 36,000 cubic yard brush pile. And the way it's been set up and everything you've seen so far is 100% of it gets ground up. We don't leave a stick left, theoretically. And as a result, we process 36,000 yards and we have nothing left. Well, let's change that. For whatever reason, we decide, you know what? Maybe we want to take it easy on our equipment. Maybe we want to cut back on our overtime, whatever the reason. We're going to change that to 50%. So the same amount comes through the door, but we're only going to process half of that. We changed one thing. Let's go see how many things change as a result of that. So let's go over to our revenue. It was our actual, which is you know the gold didn't change. We didn't tell it, hey, we want to make less or more. Kept that the same. We now are creating less revenue. Now, why would that be? Well, we're not making as much ready to sell material. You know, you. you you're not going to be selling shrubs and stuff. You have to grind it up, turn it into the finished product somebody wants to buy. And we cut that in half as far as the total volume. So it makes sense. Logically, put a check mark next to that. That makes sense. We have less material we're selling. So we saw the impact. Our revenue dropped from 70% of our goal down to 50% by one little change. Now let's go over here. This, man, you're going to be glued to this as a business owner. Let's look at this. Your gross revenue dropped. So we just went over that, but just in a different section. What about your operating costs? That went down. Why would that go down? It went almost a hundred grand down. Well, you're not running as much equipment. You're not putting in a ton of money because you're processing less. Check that box. That makes sense. What about our overhead? That more or less stays the same. There, there's some stuff that's not truly independent as overhead, but more or less that did not change a lot. So that's what we want to see. What about our labor? Our labor didn't change. That makes sense because we didn't tell it. We can, we can go into the weeds, but we're not saying we're running our guys less hours. This is just, we're running the equipment less. So down here, look at our fuel. Our fuel was we were burning 20,000 gallons of fuel. Now we're burning 12,000. We went down drastically. We're not running that grinder as much. Everything's making sense so far. Our profit margins. Think about this logically. Would this change? Well, no. Because proportionally, the cost to make a yard didn't change. What changes how many yards we're making total. So you don't want to see a change here. So that makes sense. They did not change. What about our purchase grinding suppliers? Should that go down? No, we didn't change anything about our grinding guys bringing us, our clearing guys bringing us material. So the proportion didn't change. What about our hours? That did change. Uh, our trauma was at 309 hours. Now it's down to 188. And across the board, they all went down proportionally or more or less proportionally. So that makes sense too. We're, we're running the trauma, the stacker, the grinder, the extra. Everything's being run less because we're not processing as much. Check that box. What about the proportion of Arbor's chip supply by truck size? Well, that didn't change. First of all, that, as far as our flow chart, and we'll look at that in a second to refresh your memory, but we add the wood chips after our initial pile. So that shouldn't be impacted, and especially the proportion. That didn't change no matter what. So that's good. What about the proportion of total revenue? That did change, but it depends on the category. Let's, let's look at uh, our tipping fees. It was just shy of 140000 Right here, it's just shy of 140000 Why wouldn't that change? Well, we collect tipping fees when somebody comes, they, they roll up to the scale house or the little guard check, whatever you have. And they say, we're dropping this off. You collect a tipping fee, usually based on the size of the, tr size of the truck, you let them drop. The number of trucks coming through the gate didn't change. All we told it was we're processing less of what came through. So our tipping fee shouldn't change. 
let's look down here. What about our fines? That was, let's call it 20, maybe a little over 30,000. Well, now it's about 30,000. It was about 50. Now, why, why would the tipping fees not change and all of our products would? Well, we made less of it. If, if we didn't grind 36,000 yards and now we did 18,000 yards, roughly, we're not going to have as much material to sell in the first place. The proportion of what we made didn't change. We didn't change any of that. We can, but we didn't. But the total volume of what we sold or manufactured in the first place to sell went down. So even within one graph, imagine trying to do that in your head. You, you can't catch it all. You have to set stuff like this up. This is why this tool is so important. Let's look at your tipping fee revenue by truck size. Would that change? Nope. We already went over this. Your, your tipping fees didn't change. You still let the guys come in and drop it. You just didn't process everything they brought in. So that shouldn't change. Low count by truck size. Same thing. That didn't change. We didn't cut anybody off. We didn't say we're not taking anything. We just didn't. Grind it all up. What about here? Bulk yards generated by truck size. That did not change. What about our product sales by the cubic yard and proportion of sales? That did change. Why? We didn't make as much. All these are materials we make that start as brush, more or less, brush, log stumps, our virgin material. Well, if we don't grind it all, we don't have as much material to process into these end products in the first place. So they went down. But you can see the interesting thing is the proportion. So just to recap, orange line is the proportion. And so if you add all these numbers up, that's 100% because, you know, everything you sell has to add up to 100%. That didn't change, and we shouldn't see that change. But the purple, the purple columns, that is the volume. You look at this axis. That did drop. That, let's look at our fines. Our fines was 5,500, give or take. Now it's down to 3,400 yards. We didn't run as much material through the, the trauma, so we're not going to make as much. Look how powerful this is. You changed one simple thing. And it showed you all this information. There is no, no one I know that can do all this in their head. You get guys that say they know their numbers and stuff. I'm not saying they don't know their business, but there is no way to see the power of this in your head. You have to break it down analytically. Let's go to the next page. All right, we are on our manufacturing flow chart. So we changed one simple thing. We said everything else is the same, but of the 36,000 yards of raw material that came through our door, before, before we messed with anything, we said that we were doing 100%. All of it got ground up. Now we're only grinding half of it for whatever reason. You want to conserve fuel, overtime, whatever. We're just playing around to see if everything's changing, what's changing, and if it makes logical sense if it does or does not change. Okay, so let's dive in. We dropped our amount of raw material ground in 50%. So let, let's think about this. Here's our flow chart for the cost. We got an excavator and uh, equipment operator. Should the tipping fee change? No, it shouldn't. You still collected all the money from the guys dropping it off. You didn't cut anybody off. You just didn't grind all of it up. That shouldn't change. It didn't. Check that. Primary grinding. Okay, now we run the material through the grinding. This should change. We're only grinding up half of the pile, whereas before we were doing 100%. Well, before it was $37,000 of expense. Now it's $18,000 of expense. So that makes sense. You're running less material through. You're not running the grinder and the excavator and the operator as much. Check that box. Let's go down to this one. 
So you grind everything up, it ends up in a pile, and then you're adding wood chips from tree services and you're adding grindings from grinding suppliers to that pile. Well, should these numbers change? No, they shouldn't. The tree guy still dropped stuff off. The volume didn't change, the amount didn't change, nothing did. What about the grinds? You didn't tell it that you cut any of your grinding suppliers off. All the land clearing guys brought you the same material as they did before, so that makes sense. Now, should this number, it was $17,794, now it's $16,797. Well, if this didn't change and that didn't change, why is this number different? Well, look up here. We factored in that, okay, once you grind up that pile of raw material, that excavator and operator have to throw it into a stockpile. At least that's how we set this operation up. Well, before they were handling, you know, whatever the compaction, the after compaction amount of 36,000 original yards. Now they're only handling the after compaction amount of 18,000 yards. It was $1,900 before for that guy, that operator and that, that hoe to throw it up. Now it's only 997. Interesting. That makes logical sense. Let's keep going. Your double shred regrind. All right. We're, we're going to go through these because the concept's the same. You produced less single shred material by 50%. So all of these costs, costs are in purple or red, all of these numbers are lower than they were before. You're not running the grinder as much. You're not running the stacker as much. You're not running the trommel as much. And as a result, all of these expenses go down. Just, just to check our math, let's look here. It was $83,000 before. Now it's fifty. dollars Over here, our double shred, we said before it was $21,000. Now it's $13,000. Oh, well, look, it's making sense. What a, this is interesting. Let's look at our revenue. So when we regrind material, the way we set up this operation, this is how I did it. That regrind material goes into the trommel, then up a stacker, and you're pulling the fines out. Well, this green box is your revenue. You're pulling fines out in our old business. We sold the fines. Well, that's a source of revenue. So you would expect that number to go down because you're pulling less out. You're not running as much material through in the first place. Check that box. Everything's making sense. Go down here to our natural double shred. So here, 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 across the board down in this area, these are all your finished products. Before, we sold $39,000 worth of double natural double shred. Now we're selling twenty four. dollars We didn't make as much of the raw uh, double shred in the first place. Our black went down, revenue and cost makes sense. Boom, 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 across the board. And everything makes sense logically. So check that box. Let's go over to our volume chart. So we started with $36,000, or excuse me, 36,000 yards before. Well, in the old one, we also start with 36,000. We didn't cut anybody off from dropping material off. The difference is this box right here was zero yards remaining. Not anymore. We told it we only ground half. So 50% of this number up here is that. All right. You look down here. That was 26,000 yards. Now it's 13. You're, you're only grinding that much. And look, down here. Let, let's hit on the high points. Your proportion didn't change. Of what you made, you you still are doing 50% is triple, 50% is double, but you're just producing less in the first place. Everything's making sense, but here's the important part. You can actually see your numbers with the click of a button. Instantly, all the effects right in front of you. So we went through one example as a recap. The only thing we changed was we told it 
we're going to make one alteration. We're just going to grind half of our original stockpile of raw material. There were probably 30 to 35 different data points that changed as a result of that one relatively simple concept. But because you took the time to plot this out in advance, to build a dashboard so you can run your analytics and you can see everything, it's right in front of you. You don't have to wonder how it impacts you. Within a millisecond, you know how it does. Now imagine how that would set you apart as a business owner. Imagine if COVID hit, like it did for all of us, caused by surprise, and you had to see what the effects would be. Well, you're able to do it right here, whatever the, the circumstance is. Maybe your overhead went up, maybe your labor went up, whatever it happens to be, you can see it instantaneously. We went through one example, and it was so simple in concept, but there is no other way I'm aware of to really dive in and see the impact so thoroughly as a business owner. I hope you see the value in this and we're gonna keep doing examples like this going forward. And in fact, we're gonna take my real life experiences, but we're gonna compare how I reacted as a business owner in future videos to how I would react had I had this tool in the first place.